Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the fourth episode of Behind the Music with Elia. I'm your host, Elia Msawir. So this show has been going on for four months now and it wouldn't be successful without the team uh, uh, at Dubai Media City. In my previous episodes, I hosted Legends from the Music Industry where we talked about how you can generate income from your lyrics and how you can reach curators that could take your songs to another level. And of course, how to release your music and monetize on your catalogs. Before I start this episode, I would like to remind you that uh, Dubai Media City is currently the region's largest business district um, for content creation and media industries, alongside uh, Dubai Production City and Dubai Studio City. The three pillars create the UAE's media ecosystem and host more than 3,000 companies and 34,000 professionals. Coming back to Behind the Music, the aim of this new initiative is to empower and inspire talented artists and musicians across the region by providing the tips and tricks that have helped music industry's pros crack the code to a successful career in the creative industries. And it doesn't stop here, Dubai Media City regularly hosts workshops and seminars as part of, the, of a knowledge sharing initiative to develop the region's creative talent. That being said, before I talk about my guest, Please do like, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you can do in, on social media. Believe me, since every episode I've been hosting, a, a lot of people um, are, are reaching out and, and wanting to know more about things. These episodes are made for you to do, to have all this knowledge. And probably this episode, you're going to leave it with a bag full of knowledge. My guest for today is an amazing recording and mixing engineer who has mixed Tracks for artists including Madonna, Beyonce, Pink, Britney Spears, Timbaland, and Duran Duran, to name a few. She was nicknamed Miss Lago by Missy Elliott. To know why, stick around and you shall know. Please welcome the legend, Miss Marcella Araika. Hi, Marcella. I'm very excited to have you. Um, and like, I've, we've been talking about this for probably three months now. So, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been an exciting journey starting behind the music with uh, Dubai Media City. And um, yeah, um, you are my first female uh, representative from the Yay! music industry. So <laughs> I'm super excited. A lot, when, when, I, uh, when I actually announced you, a lot of female, uh, uh, like from the industry, contacted me here in the region and they were like, like how? How? an amazing uh, a legend like yourself coming to the show and how did you you know manage your career and everything so we're gonna we're gonna tell them all about it now but i just yeah. want you to know that a lot of female representatives from here are like watching you and probably they're gonna be learning a lot from you um saying this i really wanted to know how did you start your career and basically, you know, how it all started and what was your first big opportunity? Whoever gave you the, you know, the key to the door. me to um, find that but about two and a half three years after I graduated high school I found a opportunity to go to a school in Orlando Florida called Full Sail University and Full Sail um, offered the uh, opportunity to go in and learn about the audio engineering program which I did not necessarily know about in music making um, I think in my mind when people were in the studio making music, it was, um, it was a producer and an artist. I didn't know about that third person in the room, which would be the engineer. So going to Full Sail and, and, and finding out about that I could actually learn about the you know, engineering side of things, because I've always had a passion for music, wanting to be involved in music creation in some sort. Um, I think in my earlier years before I went to Full Sail, I tried to dabble in production and it just wasn't that good. And I knew that and I just was like, well, this is not gonna be my way. So when I went to Full Sail, I, um, you know, I took it very seriously. I wanted to learn 
the ins and outs of engineering from recording to mixing. And, you know, it was a two year degree program that I finished in one year. So it was very accelerated. Um, you know, I went to school um, like anywhere between eight to 12 hours a day, you know, between lectures and what they would call labs, where I would be in the real world environment on working in, you know, recording studios and learning all about it. Um, but it was my, you know, during my tenure at Full Sail, I wanted to figure out where I wanted to end up after I graduated. So, you know, I put my mind to it and I wanted to stay in Miami, um, Florida, because for one, I'm born and raised here. And, um, you know, I just, I, I didn't really want to stay too far from home, but luckily there was a recording studio that was extremely legendary. And I was like, this is where I want to end up. I want to be at the Hit Factory. It was called the Hit Factory Criteria. And the Hit Factory has been around since the 50s, okay? I mean, everybody has walked through there from James Brown to Aretha Franklin to, I mean, you just name it, you know, to, right. to the current, legends. current yeah. to legends on legends on legends. So I basically, you know, reached out to their studio while I was at school and you know, really let them know that when I would, when I would graduate that I, you know, I wanted the opportunity to have an interview, um, which I, I later got after graduation, maybe about two weeks after I graduated Full Sail, um, the studio manager called me up, you know, and was like, hey, why don't you come in for an interview and, and you know, let's see, let's check this out. So got the job. That was the very first I guess first or second step, right? Because step one was going to the school. Right. Step two, I got a job. <laughs> um, it wasn't the dream job, but it was the dream opportunity because I got hired as a general assistant, um, which is basically an intern. Um, right. What consisted of being a general assistant? You, you know, um, I would run for food. I would make sure the flowers were fresh. I would make sure the fruit make bowls. Coffee. Were like, yeah, the coffee runs. And then some of you might be asking like, okay, well, there, when did you go into the studio? Well, I didn't really, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, but yeah. I was behind the wall. I was in this, I was, I was behind the walls, you know, and it was all about, you know, when that opportunity would be when I could be in the studio. Um, and, you know, other than when like an, uh, an engineer or somebody would ask me for help in setting up a session I really wasn't in the studio as a general, general assistant. Right. Um, about two months after I grad, after I started at the Hit Factory, um, the studio manager called me up to his office and said, "He said, this is all he said to me. He said, are you ready?'" And I didn't. Even, that's all he said. Like I didn't know what he was asking me. I was like, um, "Okay." Something in my gut just told me to say, "Say yes, say yes." I don't know what you're saying yes to, but just say yes. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm ready." And he said. Great, because Missy Elliott just called and she's on her way here in the next 30 minutes. And I need you to go in and set up the microphone, her hard drives to get the computer ready for the engineer. So basically, I now got my shot as being the assistant engineer in the room, right. um, which is as close as you can get. Right. Because now you're interacting with the artist, you know, you're you're in dialogue with the actual engineer. And I'm, I'm actually seeing how the entire process is going down you know, front, just on the front lines. Yeah. And it was that session that changed my entire life career because after the session was done, Missy's assistant called the studio manager and said, this girl, we must have her in all of our sessions. Missy loved her. I mean, <laughs> she was so on point. Like we don't want anybody else working on these sessions. So basically, you know, I was a general assistant that basically got catapulted into the next position which was being an assistant engineer into the room, which was amazing. You know, really? now I'm like, hey, now yeah. I'm into the next step. And, you know, literally my career just rolled on out after that, you know, me working with Missy and that's, yeah. that's actually, this, this story is very inspiring, 100%. You know why? Because some there's two types of people nowadays. The people that think that the, the whoever made it, made it because, you know, of, of somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody and there's the right. one people that actually know the grinding of what went behind a person's career like I also yeah. remember my first shot and it was in back in back home in Lebanon you know with Snoop Dogg and I was like I wanted to cry you know right. that was so and and even even though I was working before in, in events but it's like local events and everything but my shot was through this moment and one thing led to yeah. another so 
this is very inspiring and it's it just you need you need to work hard to reach a point where you let people see that you're worth investing and and trusting and and everything so big up to you to be honest it's a, it's a yeah it's no very... thank you but listen like failure was not an option and you know being no in way. the industry 20 years ago i mean imagine the amount the, the percentage of women that was involved during that time and i was ha I, i mean i had a spotlight on me like you want to be an engineer really yeah. like you you know <laughs> and i didn't for me i didn't really fully understand the question because i'm like yeah Yeah, like, what's the problem? Like, you know, there's not a lot of women that do that. I, I like, believe, hey. yeah, I, I, I wonder, because I think, I think in during that era that most, like, either, even male, whoever entered the studio, they immediately go into the singing route or being an artist route. So the decision you made, you, you already were passionate about it. And that's... It was all driven on passion. It yeah. was everything. I was like, this is what I've wanted, you know? This is, I've always I, like I was seeking for this opportunity since I was in grade school, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I never knew how to do it, and here I am on that path. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a I have a question since I, I since I posted on my Instagram that your <laughs> nickname Miss Lago, people asked me mm -hmm. how did you get the nickname. I I I watched most of your interviews even before um, we decided to do the interview. Uh, you know. But I would like you to share this story with, with the audience on how did you get that? <laughs> I always get so embarrassed. Yeah. I always get so but, embarrassed. But it's amazing because I, I like it. It's, it's amazing. I know I'm putting you on the spot right now, but it's a funny, cute no, story. You know? yeah. yeah. So basically working with Missy, I, I, you know, I was the assistant in the room. And one day her engineer um, was late. And, you know, when Missy gets in the studio, she's ready to go. There's no like... <laughs> waiting around until her engineer shows up. And she's like, Marcella, like, can you, can you record me? And I'm thinking like, uh Oh, like, I don't, I'm like, I, I'm like, again, I'm like, sure. Like, <laughs> am I ready for this? But I don't know, but we're going to go for it. Right. You never tell some, you, you fake it till you make it right. Like you don't say like, I don't know if I can Hell do this. Yes. Like you just, so I'm like, sure. So I get on the computer and I start recording her and I didn't know pro tools that well. Right. And so, basically like i started recording her and then she's like can you fly that hook to the next and and so forth and so i'm like okay and so i i knew kind of the idea how to do it but i just didn't know pro tools well enough yeah so yeah. i started to try to fly her hook in like slip mode on pro tools right and when i hit the space bar to like to play back what i did and it was all off and just off timing and she's like you're messing me up and then you know i'm trying to record her and i'm just not fast enough Well, basically she got up, she just was like fed up. She's like, I can't take it. She's like, you're like a turtle. Oh. Like, you know, you gotta get it. Like she called me a turtle and she was like, you gotta go. I'll just wait, I'll just wait for my engineer. I can't do this. Like you messing up my vibe. And I was devastated, devastated. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's the end of my career. I'm thinking, right? I'm like, and so I was like, how do I make, you know how do I change this around? So I literally just like, bunker down and learned like relentlessly on how to like how, how just pro tools like how do i work pro tools and then i got with a friend of mine who i asked i said look you know he had a little setup at home and i said look do you mind if i do the recording with the local acts that he had coming in there you know so i can get more practice and he's like yeah yeah come in come in so i basically just practice 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 and just hope that i would have another opportunity one day And so a few months later, that opportunity came because her engineer was late again. And she was like <laughs> desperate. Like, I, I got to get this idea out. And she's like, right. I guess I'll use you, you know, just, you know, <laughs> turtle, you know, calling me a turtle. But this time, like she, you know, she didn't know what I was up to. Like, she didn't know anything about what was happening in the behind the scenes. Yeah. So when I got into the chair and started recording her, it was a whole nother. Different level. It was a whole nother Marcella. Yeah. And so she was like. Oh, dang. She's, oh, she was like, oh, my goodness. She was like, um, uh, she was like, uh, you like a, a Lamborghini, like a Marcialago. Because they used to call oh, me Marcy, like as right. a nickname. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so Marcialago came about like Marcialago. And then over time, like I was just Miss Lago because of like that <laughs> name. Like it just became your Miss Lago. And then, you know, a few years later, working with the producer that I work with now, Danger, He introduced the incredible Lago on a oh, Britney God. Spears record. 
Um, and then, so that's where the incredible Lago, you know, was born. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's, yeah. And and so people who who just tuned in, we're talking about Missy Elliott nicknaming uh, uh, Marcella. <laughs> so this Lago is. Uh, I, I like the nickname, by the way. It's very nice. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so, very funny but embarrassing story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's these are the amazing. These are what makes a. a somebody you know genuine in in this industry as you know it's it's an, it's a, the most toughest industries out there so yeah we need we need we need to find the the nice stories um yeah. so marcella um obviously um when we started this this show i was talking about female producers and sound engineers and industry and everything we we technically lack uh, internationally and definitely here in the ua in uae and the region we lack female presence like on the mixing and recording side of things why do you think it's a like you know it's it's we came a long way since you know the 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 industry's be, you know becoming bigger and bigger and bigger but we still lack the female presence why, why do you think so and how can we like enhance this if you have an answer to that yeah um you know i just think it was uh there's a lack of of just female presence because I think, you know, there wasn't a lot of information out there on, you know, opportunities that women could do. You know, I think obviously when music, if you want to date it back decades and, you know, whenever music started coming around and it, you know, being recorded, yeah. you know, it was maybe not a thing where it was just a man that started taking on the, the role. And then it just started to multiply. And then it just sort of had that, you know, preface that it was like, oh, men do that. You know, nobody ever thought like, oh, women can do that too. And, you know, as, you know, time went on, you know, and women would find out about, you know, being, being able to have those opportunities. I think they started to just trickle in and really, you know, in, in small numbers. Right. And, you know, I just think it was just a lack of knowledge. And I think now we're in a position where, you know, obviously there's, there's a bit of a wildfire happening, you know, through obviously the help of the internet and, and social media and these, all these amazing schools that have been popping up to, you know, offer these programs that everybody can be involved in, you know, and then, you know, women like myself and other colleagues of mine, you know, we're doing our job to really educate, not, you know, from, from, very young, you know, like I right. love to go out and talk to middle school students, you know, anywhere around the ages of like, you know, 11, 12 and up, because I feel like, you know, that's where they have to start thinking about what their future is going to be, you know, four or five years down the line when they graduate high school. And, you know, I think a lot of times when I do speak to that younger generation, yeah. they're, they're, their mouths are wide open. They're like, what? what is this? I can do this. Like I, you know, some are like, I love to write poems. Could I write songs too? Of course you can. You know, some will say like, well, I love to, I just like, you know, working. I just like touching like, you know, the gears and, and, you know, could, could, you know, is there an opportunity? Of course there is, you know? So I think it's really just, you know, the education part is, wasn't there before. And now that it's there, it's more opportunity being able to, you know, uh, be given to everyone that's nice. in, that, that has a passion for it, you know? Nice. And I always say that you have to have a passion for this because, you know, the music industry is not, it's not for the faint of heart, you know? Yeah. And yeah. there's a, it's, it's a very tough business. You know, you have to put in your, 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 you know, 10,000 hours, if you'd say to be considered an expert and it's a lot, you know, it's a lot, you know, and you know, it, you have to really love to, love this and, and, and be ready for it. So I always speak on passion and not think about getting into the business or wanting to do these type of gigs because yeah. it's, it looks cool. Like that's, a, that's the wrong reason. Cause you're yeah, going to end yeah, up yeah. like being faced with a very <laughs> bad reality. hundred <laughs> like, percent. You know? I, I couldn't agree yeah. more to be honest. Um, I said, uh, I'm, I'm very intrigued about your favorite project uh, that you worked on slash favorite artist that you that you worked with 
not 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 the not you know from the best to the worst of course not it's like your the, the most fun you've ever had with an artist and the most you know fun project you've worked on yeah so i would i mean it's like it's 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 always like um it's always a very difficult question because i i can answer it very easily i could say the the most fun i, I have two of my right. favorite projects, most fun. Oh, wow. And that would be the Nelly Furtado loose album that we did. We did the entire project nice. with Tim and Danger, yeah. which was incredible. And also when I did the Blackout album with Britney Spears, I mean, we, we had so much fun re- in the studio recording. Um, we recorded in so many different parts of the, of the, you know, in the States, everywhere from New York, LA, Las Vegas, Texas, you know, we were everywhere with Brittany. And then with Nelly, we literally just worked the entire project at the Hit Factory in Miami. Right. And, you know, to just sit there for three months and knock out ideas so organically. You know, we had microphones in, every, you know, in the control room. We had microphones in the lounge, obviously in the live room as well. Um, you know, and we had two amazing producers in there. And then, you know, Nelly was just, you know, whenever she just felt inspired, like, you know, she could just jump on a scratch mic and just kind of, you know, and then we would make these records from these like scratch ideas that she would have, you know, right. or Tim or Danger would, you know, just start playing certain chord progressions and she would just jump on the scratch mic. And then, you know, we I would be in there re- recording as much as I could. And there was another engineer in the room as well, Demo. Right. And we would just like, you know, just collect, collect, collect. And then we would piece things together. Right. It was very organically made, you know, like, so it's just fun because it was so hands-on from right. every aspect, engineer, producer, and of course, artists yeah. um, and, writer, and the songwriters that were also present. So I would say those were my favorite. Um, and then I will also say um, working with like on the mixing side, I've never had as much fun as I did when I worked with um, MIA when I mixed Bad Girls because right. she came in she came in for the mix session which is a very rare instance for artists to want to be present for the mixing you know a lot of times I can just send the mix off and then they'll approving it from wherever they are in the world yeah. she wanted to fly in and sit with me and you know I mixed the record down and then she came in to listen and she had some ideas and then she really challenged me Really? No, like, yeah, she really challenged me. She's like, you know, I really just want these, the, you know, the way she would like, you know, I want the drums to just feel gritty. And, I'm th- you know, so then I was like, so then I ended up like taking the drums and, um, you know, transferring them to a tape machine, you know, printing them to tape then printing them back in the Pro Tools just so I can get that extra hit on them. Like it was just a lot, of, you know, of, of just like, you know, uh, collaboration. Right. From artist to mixer, which to me doesn't happen a lot. So it was like one of the most like it was it was it was a lot of fun and, and I loved it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of this, is 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 it true that like Britney Spears is a very nice person? Like I've never sweetest. obviously I've never, yeah. It's yeah, like, she's the yeah. sweetest girl. Oh my goodness. I mean I've, I've always like I've I've never her. yeah, I've I've never been into her music since I was young to now, but I mean, I've always been intrigued, you know, because when I grew up, MTV was our, you know, our source of, of music. Yeah. So she was always there. I'm like, oh, one day I want to meet, uh, I want to meet her. I want to see how she acts in real life and everything. So yeah, she's sweet, right? Yeah, very sweet. <laughs> I mean, she's from the South, which, that, you know, in the States, that's considered probably one of the most nicest people. Right. <laughs> you know? so, Not being biased at all. Beautiful. Her, her heart yeah. is beautiful like you know yeah and, and i love it dearly yeah amazing um so i um i have a, i have a question that also people asked me uh um actually it's on in the audience usually i don't ask these questions but i'm like i'm intrigued somehow so feel mm-hmm. free not to answer if you want but okay. um how much how much would it for example cost for an artist to work with a person like yourself and whether on the recording side or whether on the mixing side you don't have to give me like actual numbers but i mean yeah i can give you ranges because it's always it's always a range i mean you know like a a day rate for a recording engineer can go anywhere from you know 500 to 
a thousand or you know twelve hundred a day you know okay um and that's you know that's a good range you know sometimes right. some people don't have that budget so it's up to you if you go anywhere um you know you can also uh, do an hourly some people do right. hourly it's anywhere between 25 to 85 an hour you know okay. if they want to they know that if, if the client knows that they can knock something out in two to three hours and don't want to pay a day rate right you know and like that you can you know create a, an hourly rate for yourself and on the mixing side you know that really varies because from market to market you know right. what i've been learning is like even on the latin market um, you know, a mix, a, a mixer can make, you know, somewhere around $300 a mix right. and yeah. up, you know, and on the, on the, on the general market side, you know, a mixer can make, you know, about 500. To, right. Yeah. You're talking top tier, you know, to 7,000 a mix, you know, oh, you wow. know, so it, okay. it, it can, it can vary, you know what I mean? So yeah, it That's just depends on your level of expertise and obviously your resume helps yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know budget you know who who are you working with you know so of course yeah i wasn't expecting you to answer this but amazing thank you so much <laughs> no, i think i think it's very educational because i get a lot you know of people that ask me that also and i have you know even employees and people that i've been mentoring and they say to me like how much should i charge you know yeah Right. I kind of try to give them an idea to help them so they have a, a, a starting point. You never want to, you got to know your value too, you know, of course. Yeah. know your value and, 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 you know, don't, if you've only had, um, you know, a little bit of time in the studio, don't try to charge, you know, a, a day rate of $500. Like I would definitely be, you know, what you want to do is be more, um, you know, allow people to see that you know you're not sitting here just trying to rob them of money of course. but you know you want an opportunity so you're you know you give them a good rate thank you for answering this really um i have somebody from the audience his name is ibrahim sharara um he is interested to know um obviously he, yeah he's asking you worked with timberland and uh, how was it working alongside with him Working with Tim is fun. I mean, I was just in the studio with him last night too. I still, you know, I still see Tim. Tim he's, um, he's, he's an, ex he's, <laughs> he's a very, he's eccentric with his creativity. Right, right. You know? um, he's, you know, he's constantly has uh, rhythms in his head. So he's, you know, he's like kind of, you know, beatboxing the, th the idea out and then he'll go and kind of knock it out, you know, on, on his, on his keyboard or, or right. on his push. Um, but, you know, he's, he's brilliant. You know, he's, he's a visionary beyond music. You know, he can see ideas. He can have an idea and then he can see it beyond, right. you know? Um, and, and he's amazing. He's so funny. Like <laughs> he's, he likes to have a great time. And I you mean, know, his energy is awesome. I, I, so I manage a few artists, um, here in the, in the in the region and mm -hmm. i've always when i started being an artist manager myself i've always when i started you know going deep into uh who's producing this and who's you know creating this i've always wanted to reach out to timbaland to actually you know have a record with him that's one of my goals and hopefully uh, it's it's gonna happen it's gonna happen in the future for sure reach out to his manager <laughs> <laughs> that's what's gonna happen definitely yeah reach out to gary morella there you go <laughs> that's step one Before yeah, you yeah. Know you the first hey, step right i'm already on the first step knowing you so from there <laughs> we do the link yeah no, there no, we seriously. go but no i'm saying this because i think he's one of the the greatest producers you know to, yeah, no. to create legend. You know, art yeah legend indeed he continues to do so i mean even with this versus thing that he did with right. Swiss. Right. I mean, how brilliant was that over a year ago now where they created this like movement that now right. is just like a staple, you know? It's amazing. Correct. Um, so yeah, uh, Ibrahim Sharara is saying he's a legend. Um, so I have a technical question for you. What are your favorite uh, softwares? Like what do you use the most? And are you endorsed by any brand? So I'm, I use Pro Tools. Right. Um, that's basically where my world lives is Pro Tools. I've been dabbling in FL Studio for a few months now. Like that was kind of like my pandemic 
like let me learn something new thing you know yeah. um but pro tools is what i use and and like some of the plugins um that i use is you know obviously uad um, universal audio um love all five uh, the fab filter stuff um waves audio big right. in the wave world um you know i'm not um you know, there's, there's so many sound toys. Like I love sound toys for when I do like effects and stuff like that. Yeah. Any of the, any of the, any of the verbs and delays in Valhalla. Um, yeah. love, like, I mean, these are just kind of like my go-tos right now. Um, and then like, you know, within, within all of that, like I would say like a, um, you know, a CO1B, um, plug-in, um, hardware and software, my favorite, um, I wish I had a Fairchild 660 hardware, but I have it in software and it's amazing in right. um, the UAD. It doesn't um, come as hardware? It does, but it does. I don't own it. Oh, yeah. I just don't own it. <laughs> I wish I had one. New investment coming on. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so, and I'm, you know, I, I'm not, you know, bunkered down and, in, in, you know, in, being endorsed by anybody. I do work with like IK Multimedia who has an amazing, um, you know, plethora of plugins that I love to use, you know, the T-Rex and um, they just came out with the new mix box a few months ago, which is really cool too, like a lunchbox style. Right. And, um, you know, I've worked with uh, Waze Audio quite a bit throughout the years. So, um, you know, I work with companies, you know, but I'm not like, you know, I wouldn't call it like a, you know, yeah, <laughs> long, long, you know, endorsement. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of technicality, somebody uh, from the from the viewers is asking, how how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel angry to uh, to know like the the distribution platforms, like uh, streaming platforms, are always there to ruin uh, the 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 mix that you create by compressing it and you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but listen, you know, when you think about radio, radio compresses uh, 30 to one. I mean, every, you know, if you're going to listen to it outside of this, it, it, it does, you know, because it's like the and then we're, we're trying to figure, you know, in the world of, of engineering societies and stuff, we're trying to figure out what the best, um, you know, rule of thumb will be in the future. Um, but absolutely, you know, there's times where I hear my records and I'm like, <laughs> what happened to the bass what happened to the you know because it's just so squashed and then uh, does it make me angry yes <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes <laughs> Fair. Fair but we'll get there we will get there you know <laughs> so, I mean, you have like certain streaming platforms like title but then you have to pay for those premiums to play you know for it to have that you know high definition audio you know but we'll, we'll get there i i had the uh... I don't, I don't want to call it an incident or something, but I had one of my artists uh, mastering their album with a very, very famous mastering engineer. And yeah. when we received uh, the album, he told them, like, I made it minus 3 dB for the streaming platforms. And they uploaded everything there and everything, you know, but it sounded super low on some yeah. platforms and people started complaining about it and we couldn't know what to do and the album is still there and yeah <laughs> you get maybe well, getting it remastered well uh, they they're thinking of doing it right now but i mean that yeah. was released 6 years ago approximately oh wow. Well then, yeah, you can definitely go for a remaster after 6 years yeah but but the thing <laughs> is that's that's the, that's what i wanted i wanted to get to like Obviously, the, the, the engineer knows what he's doing and he's talking about and everything. But I mean, yeah, but it's, it, it, it just ruined this thing for the artist. But, you know, people learn and uh, yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. No, listen, the mu I, I was I listened to a lot of music from back in the day. And a lot of that music is suffering right now because we weren't in that era. Yeah. You know, the music from the late 90s, early 2000s. Like we weren't in that era. So like now it's kind of like when you hear some of those records compared to like a Drake record or, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it has, you know, you know, the feel of it feels different. Level wise, it feels different. Right. So, you know, we're, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, somebody's asking, what is your IG? Charara, it's uh, Incredible Lago. 
on Instagram. Yeah. Are you on other platforms? Yeah, Twitter, everything is incredible. Lago, um, Facebook, it's just my name, um, Marcella. Right. I think it's under Miss Lago Areca, but yeah. It's Perfect. Whoever wants, yeah, whoever wants to uh, ask Marcella any questions, please do. We are almost getting uh, to the end of the, the discussion, so please shoot your uh, questions. Uh, it's a one in a lifetime opportunity. But hopefully we'll have her here in, uh, in Dubai. So shoot your questions and I will continue by saying, Marcella, what, what would you give as an advice to somebody who wants to pursue uh, rec being a recording or mixing engineer? Um, you know, female or male, doesn't matter. But like, what are your yeah. biggest advice? Right? I guess my biggest advice is, you know, figure, figure out what's best for you because, you know, if, if maybe going to a school is not something that you feel like is good for you, um, whether it's because you just, you know, you don't have the time, maybe you're, you know, a parent with multiple children, um, maybe it's just, you know, a, a budget standpoint, and you just can't go. But I think you got to figure out what's best for you and, and, and really immerse yourself in this world because, with audio, we're in the revolving door of technology that's constantly changing. And you have to be able to find, you know, um, the right outlets to where you're able to keep up and just educate yourself throughout. I mean, luckily for platforms like YouTube, where you can go on and, you know, just search like um, tricks on Pro Tools or how to, you know, mix drums. And, you know, there's so many awesome outlets out there that, you know, you can really study. And then, you know, like I said, if going to school isn't for you, but maybe trying to get into the, into the, into the door by, you know, really um, going out and getting like very low level position in the studio or right. in a record company, you know, I, I think as long as you're somewhere within the music industry line of business of some sort, you're going <laughs> to, I got, I got to say it again, <laughs> you got to get into your step one, you know, like, you got to just start by, by, by walking the walk. And, you know, I, I would just say like, don't overwhelm yourself by saying like, you know, a, I will never make it because of course I didn't think I was going to make it. And look, you know, here I am 20 yeah. minutes later talking to you guys about how to make it. Right. Yeah. But I just think, um, you know, it's, it's really about figuring out what your step one is and, and just really and being ready to immerse yourself in the world of production and engineering, training your ear, you yeah. know, understanding music, not just the music that you like, but music that's outside of what your spectrum is, you know, because if production is what you want to get into, if mixing is what you want to get into, you have to be able to understand and have that dialogue with right. everybody in the room, you know, not just understanding R&B music. Like I listen to every kind of music and I've always been that way as a kid, right. you know, like I've always been like a woman of just like a kid. And then I turn into a woman. Like, you know, where I listen to world, worldly music and country music and, you know, alternative hip hop, R&B, like you name it. I'm, you know, I love, I even love listening to music where it's like lo-fi beats just because I like to hear the, really? like, the sound. Yeah, I do. It's, like, I it's, like it's nice that you mentioned this because I have a, a dear friend of mine here in, in Dubai who also runs another show on Dubai Media City. Uh, his name is Big Has, and he creates. Uh, he does these playlists of lo-fi Arabic lo-fi. Lo oh, I'm gonna, cool. I'm gonna, gonna send you. Definitely, I will share it with you. It's super interesting. It's from producers from this region, and I, I put it almost like at least once a week, and just yeah. Yeah, and just, just you know, zone <laughs> yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's. Yeah. Uh, would you have you? Like, sorry. Go ahead. Have you uh, have you listened to, for example, for much more aggressive music, like, let's say, rock or metal? Or have you worked on some something in the studio? I mean, so I worked with, um, so when it comes, that's the one thing. I can, the metal music. <laughs> I See, I, I put you on. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand the metal music. And, sure. um, uh, but with rock, uh, I've worked on, you know, Duran Duran. I right. worked with an um, alternative rock band called Simple Plan. Okay. Um, a few years back, yeah. Um, I think but I, I have saw them here in Dubai, Simple Plan. Yeah. Oh, really? I, oh, yeah, wow, 2007, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You probably were, they were probably working on the records we did together. <laughs> oh, wow. What a yeah, yeah. We did a bunch of records with them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, off top, I think that's sort of 
I haven't really worked with a lot of rock bands, but I do love like rock music, but the metal, I can't do the metal. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anybody that loves metal music. I just, I've tried, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. I, okay, so I started my, my career uh, in, as an artist manager with a metal band. Um, oh, cool. That, you know, blindly gave me, gave me an opportunity and I thank them so much. They're from Lebanon, their name is uh, or Chimera. And that was 11 years ago. And then because of this band, I was, you know, it opened doors for me to meet, you know, legends, artists, managers, et cetera, et cetera. But as I came, you know, uh, you know, I, I grew in my, I grew up in my career, I changed to a lot of things. At the moment, uh, you know, hip hop is, uh, is the way. Yeah. And especially uh, Arabic hip hop, which is a, also a coincidence that tomorrow, uh, I don't know if you know the song uh, Astronaut in the Ocean. Yes, so, I love that. <laughs> so tomorrow, so tomorrow, uh, uh, Warner Music are going to be releasing the remix, which has one of my artists and it's going to be in Arabic. Awesome. So um, thank you so much. I'm going to be sending you. Sure you that would be good? <laughs> <laughs> if I can't find it, I'm going yeah, to, I'm going to. Yeah. It, at, at, in a few hours, it's going to be all, all over the, the streaming Perfect. platforms, for sure. Um, okay. I, will, I, want, I want to stay talking to you, to be honest. This is very entertaining. This is very amazing. The stories you're telling are brilliant. Uh, but we yeah. come to the end of our conversation. Uh, I want you to, to know that these, these episodes are, are here for the people to have all the knowledge. Also, it's created by Dubai Media City, which runs a, a festival called On the XB. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen last year because of the pandemic and everything. But it's hopefully going to be taking place this year or probably next year. And I would love to have you with us here. So please do not turn down my, my invitation whenever no. you, you receive it into your inbox. Love to come out. <laughs> yeah, I would love to come out. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank it's you so fun. much. It, it is. See, I'm, 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 I'm a nice host. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a great host. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really, it's a, it's a it's an honor and pleasure to know you, to meet you, and I'm definitely looking forward to meeting you live, and probably work with you on one of my artists' next record. Uh, I would love to, you know, talk about this later on, and definitely whoever in the audience would like to reach out to Marcella for work, let me know. I could make the link in a way or another, but please make it professional. You like. No, no fan girling on her. Uh, so, so yeah. If if you guys are interested, just let me know. I'll do the link up, and uh, we'll take it from there. Marcella, thank yeah. you so much. Um, thank again, you. it's an honor. Everybody here in Dubai are happy now. So, oh, see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the fourth episode of Behind the Music with your host, Eliam Sawur. It was a very fun and interesting interview uh, and episode. The stories that was shared, that were shared here about Britney Spears, Timbaland, uh, Danja, the, you name it, and all the artists that Marcella worked with. Um, it was fun. The next episode is coming your way next month, end of next month. Um, as usual, I have somebody who created a school and academy for music business and you're going to be amazed who I'm getting and we're going to share a lot of hidden secrets from the music industry. So stay tuned. Um, keep sharing this video. Keep sharing this, um, this show. Dubai Media City, thank you so much. Thank you for the team. And also there's somebody that I want to thank always here with me in the in the in the studio, which is Hakam, who runs the show behind the music and uh, he, he runs the social media and everything. Thank you, everybody. Uh, have a great evening and I'll be seeing you next month. Behind the music, out.